Alright, uh, what's up folks? Um, so, I was browsing the internet and a friend sent me a link on Facebook that, uh, for a news article that evidently Jinko jeans is back in style. And um, I actually used to be a hardcore Jinko fanatic from 96 to um, 98, or 99, I'm sorry, 96 to 99. I probably had um, six pairs of Jinkos and some kickwares and gats and stuff like that, so... I thought I'd talk a little bit about that today, and, uh, you know, you can look at the link in the description, go to the store, and, uh, check out, uh, what they're doing. So, uh, yeah, give me a second here. Alright, uh, so without any further ado, I was just wanted to kind of talk about, uh, my experiences and kind of where they came from and, and that kind of thing. So, um, I guess to kind of time travel back a little bit, um, I remember, uh, I'm trying to think, I, it was... I believe it was a summer between the 6th and 7th grade, or it was in the 6th grade, I can't remember. Whenever um, Clueless came out to home video. So I guess the movie Clueless, you know, with Alicia Silverstone and the guy from Scrubs and the girl from that other show. But anyway, right, um, Clueless. Yeah, it came out in 95. Um, my sister, she was in high school. <laughs> she was a freshman in high school. Okay. So my sister was uh was in high school and um she was really into that movie. For some reason it really resonated with her. And she wanted to uh, to kind of do the same fashion as the girls in that movie and, and a lot of girls in the mid nineties were too. Um but but at any rate, uh I I remember when it came to home video, so it was somewhere in ninety six. Um and I was either still in the sixth grade or just leaving the sixth grade. We rented it, um, or she rented it. I, I didn't have any choice. She rented the movie. We came back, um, and um, I watched it with her. And <laughs> there was this one scene to where um, uh, Alicia Silverstone's character is describing how the um, guys in high school dress and how they just look just terrible and hideous. So, okay, I don't want to be a traitor to my generation and all, but I don't get how guys dress today. I mean, come on, it looks like they just fell out of bed and put on some baggy pants and take their greasy hair, ooh, and cover it up with a backwards cap and, like, we're expected to swoon? I don't think so. But I remember something that really resonated with me was the, um, the jeans that these guys are wearing in that one scene. I was like, I have to have a pair of jeans like that. I have to have that. I mean, for some reason, it just blew my mind seeing jeans as big. Because, I mean, it was the mid-90s, you know. I'm starting to try to get into baggier jeans um, because I was getting into grunge and alternative and, and heavy metal and that kind of stuff. So I start, I was wanting to get baggy jeans, and um, I had some that were just, they were just your typical baggy jeans, you know. But uh, they weren't anything like that. I'd never seen anything like that before. Um... So fast forward, we're doing um, clothes shopping for uh, seventh grade now, um, same same time frame, and uh, and so we're at uh, J C Penney. I noticed that they had some uh, zones. I guess that was J C Penney's name brand for their wide leg jeans, because Levi's had the wide leg jeans. And I was really, I was like, holy crap! I saw a commercial for Levi's wide leg jeans that summer, and I was like, now that's pretty cool. That's something I can get behind. So we go to JC Penney and we we're looking to had a another brand called Zones. Um and I saw those and I was like, wow. Um those actually blow the Levi's away. Uh they are probably I'd say they're probably twenty two twenty two or twenty four inches around at the bottom. And they're they're pretty they're pretty wide. Um so I'd say probably twenty two, twenty four inches at the bottom. Um and yeah, it just, it really blew me away. So I was wanting something like that. So, uh, uh, we actually got a pair of those and, and I, uh, found another brand of jean called Jinkos and, uh, that blew me away too. Um, I don't remember at that time there being any of the, the crazy wide leg jeans that Jinko became known for, but, uh, we got uh, a pair of pipes and I believe they're like 20 inches at the bottom. Um, nothing big, nothing huge or fancy. Um, they were just, you know, just wide leg jeans, you know. But anyway, so uh, that's basically how seventh grade went. Um, it seemed like sometime in 90, late 96, early 97, 
um, there started to be a uh, an arms race over who could get the biggest jeans. And it was between a company called Jinko, another company called Kickwear, and a third company called Gat, or Gypsies and Thieves, but they went by Gat. Um, so everybody's competing, trying to get who can get the biggest jeans, who can get the biggest jeans. Um, Jinko was coming out with um, their mammoths and their uh, kangaroos um, and their skunks and their taxis. Um, the kangaroos were pretty big. Uh, the mammoths were pretty big. Um, and then uh, Kickwear came out with some. They were like uh, 40 inches at the bottom. Uh, Gat was coming up with some trying to be competitive. I think they were at 35 inches at the bottom or something like that. Um, but, uh, so I remember everybody's in a, in a race to see who could get the widest leg of Jean, uh, for some reason. And then, um, I was on the internet and it was early, early 98. We're talking probably January or February. Um, and I was at Jinko's website and there was actually like an online campaign for a new cut of Jean that was coming out there calling the crime scene. And it absolutely blew my, uh, 14 year old mind uh, and I was I was like oh my gosh I have to have these it said uh, more details of March or coming in March or something like that I remember uh, it was spring break so it had to be March it was it had to be right when they were released and we're talking right when they released I went up to um, the mall at a store, a store called The Buckle which is previously called The Brass Buckle they mainly sold um, Mossimo um Buffalo, uh, Z Cavaricci, if anybody, you, you, uh, remember those brands, um, they mainly sold those brands, it was more or less, it was kind of a hip preppy store, it wasn't full on prep like, um, The Gap or Abercrombie, uh, because, I don't know, I mean, the workers, they usually have flannel tied around their waist and kind of ripped up jeans, so it was a, they had a little bit more edge, but for some reason they sold Jingos, I don't know why, because that has nothing to do with preps. But, uh, but anyway, um, so I remember going up there and actually, uh, getting a pair of these things and it was right release cause it was March of 98. It was right dead on at release. Um, and I just thought they were the coolest things. So um, here they are, uh, a pair of my, my, uh, crime scenes from 1998 and, um, they're, uh, 50 inches at the bottom. So for the time, Jinko was the, um, the king of the castle for the wide leg jeans. Because it came up with these uh, uh, 58 or 50 inch jeans. And uh, I remember I was like, I got these and I wore them. And all my friends were like, holy cow, look at the size of these jeans. I mean, everybody was just going ballistic. Um, and I remember I made this one friend of mine jealous because she's like, I was wanting to get the crime scenes. I was like, sucks to be you, sucker. Beat you to the punch. But um, probably one of my favorite parts about this, though, is, okay, so like, uh, yeah, the you got the you got the change pocket where you can actually put your whole hand in. I mean, now you can put a Galaxy S6 in there, or a iPhone 6s, whatever. Um, but the, and then um, the pockets here go down past the knee. But I like the, the fact that there's this uh, zipper pocket here. Um, zipper pocket's nice. And um, I also like the uh, on the back the detailing as you uh, go down. The, you got your uh, your chalk outline down here. It says uh, Jinko in the police tape uh, thing. Fold up the label, it says 5 on the bottom, because they're uh, 50 inch jeans. Um, yeah, I just, I just thought it was a really, really, really cool design. And especially on the back, you got um, you got your, your standard pocket here. And then you got your, uh, I guess you just your decorative pocket back there. I remember um, I had a, a wallet chain that went down to here. Actually, I had two wallet chains. I had one, it was basically right about that. And I had one, and it came down to about my shin. But I would put my wallet in this pocket, so basically the chain almost drug the ground. And, uh, yeah, needless to say, dude, I hit the 90s fashion heavy and hard when it came to hold the, the skater, um, grunge, um, I don't want to say punk. I mean, I thought it was punk at the time, but it really wasn't. And when you, when you start looking like what uh, Green Day was doing and MXPX was doing and stuff like that at the time, they weren't wearing huge wide leg jeans or anything like that but to me I thought it was punk because it was like the absolute like antithesis of everything that was going on it was like absolute rebellion so it's like to me it's like this has to be punk uh, but uh, 
yeah, I was just uh, so stoked. But at any rate, uh, this is basically a big advertisement to say that the Jinko is coming back, believe it or not. Um, they, uh, they just announced that they're, uh, they are re-releasing some brands. You can head over to Jinko.com, check out the, um, the, the new styles that they got coming out. I have no idea if there's a market, if anything's going to happen to this or what. But, I mean, hey, I think it's kind of interesting that they're coming back. So they got the kangaroos now. We got the, um, the mammoths. They brought back the gorillas, the skunks. Um, they brought back the pipes. Um, there's a, a couple other ones. I think there was like eight in total. But uh, the ruse, I always wanted to get a pair of ruse. And I never got around to it because this other guy... I was friends with, he had a pair of ruse, and there was like this kind of this unspoken pact between me and, and my other friends that wore Jinkos, that once somebody gets a pair, they're pretty much off the market, because you don't want to show up at the mall, and both of you are wearing the same pair of jeans, you look like, look like an idiot. So basically, once he got the ruse, they were off the market, nobody else could get them, and I was always bummed out about it, because I thought they were so cool, um, and I just never was able to get them. But now they're coming back, and so, you know, who knows, who knows what will happen with that. But, uh... I just thought it was it was a, a really cool. Um, let me see. But uh, hold on a moment. I also got another pair. I'll show you. I'll show you some gats. I got a pair of gats. All right. Uh, here are the gats. Um, as you can see, these are <laughs> remarkably, remarkably bigger. Um, these are. Uh, these are 69 inches at the bottom, so these are the uh, the 69 inch jeans. So um, yeah, we had a uh, Jinko had 50, and then so it's like now now what are we gonna do? We got we got to outdo the 50. So um, Kickwear and Gat, uh, they both came out with a pair of 69 inch jeans. Um, Kickwear 69 inch jeans actually had a drawstring at the bottom, so you could um, put them on and draw them up. I guess if I guess for the ravers if you're into that, but to me that doesn't make any sense because they didn't have a drawstring that's, you know, 80 inches long. So, I don't know, that never really made sense to me. But I always wanted to get a pair of them just for the, just for the heck of it. But, uh, yeah, we got the, uh, the gats here. Um, 69 inches. As you can see, these things are absolutely colossal. Uh, I got these in, um, 98. Yeah, so I got the crime scenes in March of 98. I got these in uh, November of 98. And I think something interesting uh, about both of these is the fact that um, the Gats and the Jinkos are both made in America. Which, to me, that, that's really, really striking that they're both made in America. Because now, whenever, anytime I get clothes, they're always made in Thailand or Korea or Mexico or something like that. But both of these uh, jeans are made in America. So that's, that's really interesting to me. Um... But yeah, I mean, I mean, come on, come on, come on, guys. This is the 90s right here. This is the 90s. This is American. This is American. USA. 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 Come on. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's not to like about that? But I can raise, raise up my leg. There we go. Ah. Raise, raise up my other leg. Yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, I was really... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I was, I was just really blown away that these are coming back, man. Uh, I was wearing these around the house uh, yesterday and today, and, and Tori just absolutely hates these jeans. She just absolutely hates them. And I was telling her, I, I said, I'm just going to start wearing these all the time. This is just gonna be, I'm bringing them back, dude. I'm bringing it back. And she's like, oh, God, no. If, uh, if you bring it back, I'm going to not be anywhere around. And we were joking, and she's like, um, you look like you're one of those dead gum, uh, Pentecostal holiness women where they had the long denim skirts and I was like yes dude I'm gonna get these and I'm gonna wear them to a Pentecostal holiness church and uh, see if I can get in <laughs> but, but at any rate um, yeah I don't think uh, there's anything else really to say um, the gats they weren't as extreme with the pockets and anything I mean yeah they had, they had big pockets but I mean it wasn't you know 35 different pockets um the, you can just knuckle deep in the change pocket, things like that. But, uh, yeah, so uh, there's that. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking a, a trip down memory lane. Um, basically, by summer of 99, I pretty much abandoned all of these because I was, like, getting really into Ramones, um, Huntington's, um, you know, stuff like that. 
and all those bands were just wearing Levi's 505s and uh, leather jackets. By, um, I think the last time I wore either of those seriously was probably the summer of 99. And, um, and then I started getting smaller jeans like Levi's and things like that, Wranglers and, and stuff. And I got my leather jacket, um, December of 99. And pretty much from that point on, I just been wearing regular jeans and skinny jeans from there on out. Um, 2000, yeah, the year 2000, yeah, 2000, I got a, my first pair of, uh, spandex super skinnies and it was like, they were ridiculously tight. Um, and then, but yeah, uh, I just, I just thought it was interesting how I went from, uh, super, super, super huge jeans to super, super, super small jeans, spare no expense. And it's basically one way or the other. It's, it's all about extremes with me, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not any of the, the, down the middle road. I'm I'm all about the extremes, baby. One shoulder or the other. But uh, <laughs> I guess that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in and peace out.